on this edition of ME Report. We're just having fun, so I don't see the big deal of it. Boos and bongs mean big trouble for students posting illegal pictures on social media. And they're five now, so they've been here basically like their whole possible. lives. The sad side of no-kill shelters. Some dogs have never seen a home outside of these walls. It's probably the most important thing I do as a pediatrician is vaccinate. The vaccination debate, why some people are disagreeing with the doctors. MU Report starts right now. From the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, your home for complete Marshall University news. You're watching MU Report. Hello and welcome to this edition of MU Report. I'm Morgan Wright. And I'm Sarah Connors. West Virginia has lost one of its great leaders and friends, Mike Perry, a Huntington native and president of Marshall University from 1999 to 2000. Perry leaves a legacy not just in Huntington, but throughout the tri-state as an attorney, banker, and historian. Due to his high regard and performance while serving at Marshall, the Board of Trustees voted to remove the word interim from his title on the list of Marshall University presidents. Perry and his wife Henriella are best remembered for founding the Heritage Farm Museum in Huntington. Mike Parody was 78 years old. Now to a decision that could take just a second that could have enormous consequences down the road. Students getting caught red-handed for illegal drug and alcohol use, and as I found out, they don't seem to care. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. It seems as though there's a new social media on the internet every day, and with them seems to be coming illegal posts of underage drinking and illegal substances. We're just having fun, so I don't see the big deal of it. It's definitely overlooked because when you go to college, that's half of it. You're on your own, you get to experience things that you didn't try before, so a lot of it is going out and drinking and having fun. But school officials disagree. These posts on social media are a big deal. Um, it was posted on a Snapchat page, and um, the RA sent it to the RD, who then sent it to me, um, and said, hey, we had some underage drinking in the residence hall. After these students are caught either drinking or with an illegal substance on campus and posting pictures of it online, they are brought in for a meeting with Judicial Affairs, where then they could be put on probation for a semester, asked to take an alcohol class with a fee of $50 at the rec center, or participate in community service. Law enforcement is also holding those on the internet responsible for their virtual actions. Um, if someone goes into an unprotected Facebook page, we might see pictures of drugs and guns and money, and they're very recently posted, so that gives us information that we can use to, to even get a search warrant to go in and search. So the next time you think about taking a picture of yourself, like this, think twice about where it's going and who's seeing it. At some point, you're going to want to get a job, and there are companies that make a, a living by saving Facebook pages. Um, so when you think you've deleted it, it's still there, and a potential employer may be able to find out, uh, you know, see the picture of you um, with, the, with the drinking when you're 18 years old, um, or, you know, worse, with drugs. According to a study done by JobVite.com, 93% of recruiters will review a candidate's social media before hiring. Whether it's on your cell phone or your laptop, slow internet is frustrating. In Huntington, a contest in partnership with Frontier Communications could mean people will see some big changes to citywide internet. ME Report's Tim Carrico talked with business owners about the opportunities new internet could bring. Huntington small businesses like Bittersweet Coffee Shop rely on the internet. We uh, communicate with our customers uh, via the internet. We c communicate with our vendors that way, place orders. I mean, basically everything that we do is really through the internet. The shop offers free Wi-Fi, but the constant connection is not always the best quality for the shop or its customers. When we're really humming and we have, you know, five, six, eight, ten people on devices, it really starts slowing it up quite a bit. The slow connection sometimes makes it pretty difficult for the shop to process payments. It really caused some unneeded stress um, just over trying to use the internet. But Huntington could receive an internet upgrade. The city is entering the contest America's Best Communities. Winners can receive up to three million dollars based on community improvement plans. Mayor Steve Williams plans to use the money to revitalize Huntington, including faster broadband for parts of the city. We think that we have um, an opportunity to do something that no city our size in the country is able to do. 
Mayor Williams says seeing these Wi-Fi bars could bring millions of dollars into the area. They have to have everything working to, to their favor to reduce their costs, but also to be able to do things quicker and smarter. A win for the city would mean a better internet connection, and local businesses hope that will bring better service. In Huntington, Tim Carrico, MU Report. The first 50 quarterfinalists will be chosen March 25th. If Huntington is selected, the city will receive $35,000. Top winner will be selected in 2017. The recent measles outbreak in the United States has caused more than panic. Now there is a larger debate on whether or not to vaccinate. Joining us in studio now is Emmy Reports' Haley Wade, who has more on information from both sides of this argument. Haley. Thanks, guys. Because no vaccine is 100% effective, some say they shouldn't have to risk their own health by living around people who refuse the shots. But on the flip side, those who don't want the vaccine say they shouldn't be forced to have it. Uh, it's probably the most important thing I do as a pediatrician is vaccinate. Staying healthy seems to be a constant concern for many, but what happens when worry strikes that vaccines may do more harm than good? Joe Evan, chairman of pediatrics at Marshall University's School of Medicine, says a sudden fear of immunizations is backtracking the progress medicines made. Measles was eradicated in the United States uh, in 2000. There were no cases. But then you get this fraudulent study, people dropping their guard and not getting the vaccine. Evan believes people don't see the need for getting vaccinated because they don't see the threat it poses. That the vaccine program is a victim of its own success because nobody today remembers anybody with polio. But as early, as recently as the 1950s, there were 35,000 cases of paralytic polio a year just in this country. The debate behind vaccinations isn't even as much of a global issue as it is a national issue. I see most of our students' entire immunization records. Most of the, the parts of the world where we get students from, they have very robust and strong immunization programs. Um, it probably goes beyond what many people uh, in West Virginia would have. Students at Marshall have mixed feelings on immunizations, much like the rest of the nation. That's why I don't go to the hospital, I don't really take medicines because of this. I understand people being skeptical of like science and the health perfection profession in general, but uh, I, I don't see any reason to really fear vaccinations. Evan hopes the outbreak will help raise awareness in the end. This measles epidemic is going to open our eyes to, yes, these diseases can come back. These diseases we've had controlled for 20, 30, 40 years. We can't go backwards. Doctors say it's important to take early symptoms seriously because what could seem like a bad cold, high fever, runny nose, or sore throat could actually be measles. According to the Center for Disease Control, measles outbreak has infected more than 120 Americans. In the studio, Haley Wade, MU Report. A lifetime in a cage. That is the only thing some dogs at a local no-kill animal shelter have ever known. Little Victories in Huntington promises to hold animals until they find a forever home. But as I found out, for some of those animals, that day has never come. So she wobbles a lot, kind of like Parkinson's for dogs. Two miles down a one-way street sits an animal shelter that stands out from the rest. Little Victories is a no-kill shelter where people from all over come to adopt dogs. But there are a few who often get overlooked. They were brought here at like six months of age. And they're five now, so they've been here basically their whole lives. Dogs like Daisy, who has spent a long time in one of these cages. She actually has been here pretty much her entire life. And Layla, who's been here for five years. They're really good dogs. It's just they never get the attention that they deserve. And the attention seems to stay on the younger dogs. A lot of people come, they want puppies. But once the puppies are gone, the veterans of the shelter continue to stake claim on their cages, while the workers depend on the community to keep these dogs fed and sheltered. Little Victories run solely on donations. All the food that you're seeing in this room was donated around Christmas time, and they say that so much is coming in, they can't even keep count. With the help of the community, these dogs live their lives at Little Victories. But staff says this house is not a home, and every dog deserves a chance to live outside of a cage. Morgan Wright, MU Report. After I left Little Victories, that black and white dog you saw did get adopted. All of the dogs at Little Victories can be brought home for just $50.
From little victories to major ones, the Cabell Huntington Animal Shelter just had their largest adoption event of the year. And Emmy reports Rob Engel was there to see dozens of dogs find their families. It's a rough life without a home, but these animals need more than just a place to stay. You look into the eyes of any one of these, they deserve to find a loving family. Family. That is the word of the day at the Cabell Huntington Way and Animal Shelter's adoption event. And while some enjoyed the time with theirs, others were without one. Now this little guy was one of eight who was brought into the shelter along with his brothers and sisters, and he's the last one left. He, along with all the other animals here today, can be adopted for a fee of $50, which includes spay and neutering, first visit, and all proper vaccinations. As it turns out, he wasn't without a loving home for long. And I just see this little puppy, and I just love it. For Colombian international student Paula Polanco, her new puppy is more than just a pet. It's like my new family, because I'm alone here, so I know he's going to... He's going to be my baby. Paula wasn't the only one who couldn't resist these faces. Shelter director Scott Iselli explains why this event is one of the biggest adoption days of the year. Instead of just being in their, uh, their kennel or their cage, here everybody's out walking around. They see that the dogs are interacting with each other. You can really get a feel whether the dogs are good with others, good with kids. While 44 wagging tails went home with their new families, others were not so lucky. Unfortunately, the reality is that if the pets aren't adopted and space becomes a huge consideration, then some of them will be euthanized. Before the event, the shelter was at its capacity of 150 animals. Now, around 105 animals remain at the shelter, waiting for their chance to be man's best friend. Rob Engel, ME REPORT. Falls, and I'm not talking about football, but roller derby. Joining us in studio now is Emmy Report's Jesse Starkey, who got a front row seat to Huntington up and cunning Jewel City Roller Girls. If there's one word that describes these ladies, it's tough. And what started out as just something fun for these ladies to do on the weekends is now drawing a serious crowd. The whistle blows and the Jewel City Roller Girls are ready to take some falls and some even harder hits. But they don't seem to mind as they get right back up and move even faster. That's Erin Stockhausen. She works three jobs and is a student at Marshall. But when she's on the derby track, she's Olivia Prey, and she's the captain of the derby team. Actually, I'm really kind of quiet. I don't know if it'll come across that way in the footage because when I'm on the track, I'm really loud and I communicate a lot. I also tend to swear a lot. I don't think I swear too much in real life. <laughs> she can sum up roller derby in just a few words. Exhilarating and awesome. The game of roller derby has two main positions. The jammers who stay low and move fast to score the points. And the blockers who travel in packs to keep the jammer from coming through. But points scored is just a small part of what derby means to this team. Katie Dalzell goes by the name R2 on the track, and she is about to celebrate her four year derby bursary. She says when the skates are on, she has the confidence to be whoever she wants. Yeah, and I think that you skate for a while and you believe that you can do things you didn't think you could do. Though the rough sport may not be for what? everyone. Are you the okay. yelling In the and the fall. For sure. And the um, wheels turning for a let's plan. Run this with the means switches. everything <laughs> for the Jewel City Roller Girls. Does anyone have questions, comments, observations? It was definitely fun to learn about a new sport during this story. And that does it for this edition of Emmy Report. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter to see what we're working on every day. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.